Hunter x Hunter episode 116. Ah, yes, my fourth favorite character. Overhead peaceful shots of the palace and wind and rain. Has time not expired yet? This is one time you don't need to explain. Yeah, there you go. Alright, we saw this already. He's not injured, he's just resting. Another stairwell life lost. This is deep recap. We saw way past this. What will you be do without that one eye? But also, yes. I really hope that ends up being what it is. I hope Knuckle comes in right from that blind spot. What's honorable, whichever way it goes. And then there was an elevator, and then Wolfie just quit on himself. <laughs> a lot happened. Gon met Pidu. Gon went into devil mode. Yeah, there's a lot going on. Yeah, this, there's so many great things to cut to. Any of these things are great. And this also. I mistakenly thought that uh, Kulu's grandfather was along for the ride, but he just showed up to provide transportation, I guess. What a recap. There is indeed a lot going on. Revenge X and X recovery. Guessing Gon's revenge... Shoots. Oh, Kamugi's recovery. I get the feeling also that Pito will continue to... Pito might be torn here. She's been given an order to heal Kamugi. She loves killing strong things. I think Kamugi wins out in priority. Oh, what a great moment. I'm also curious. I feel like maybe she doesn't. We haven't seen this before. That's also part of it. Oh no. She's compromised. This is not how you really want it though, right? Not saying at all that Gon is a, a villain and Pito is a hero, not the case. But actually this is a dynamic that you find often with villains. Like one thing I've said often is the villains always have an advantage that they don't care about other things. They don't care about right and wrong. They don't care about saving lives. They have no like secondary tasks except their own selfish desires. Whereas the heroes do. And so the heroes have more, more to think about, more to consider, more to protect, and therefore more energy expended, more caution needed. In a sense, Gon is in that particular aspect of the villain role right now where he could just not care about Kamugi and that would give him a major edge over Pito. I mean, also for Pito, it's not really about Kamugi. It's about following the king's orders. She's sort of in that role by accident or indirectly. And why is she healing a tiny, weak little girl? Just priorities. That's a match for his emotional state too. It's not his normal thing. Look at the girl on the floor. <laughs> That's inconvenient, isn't it? Come on, Grandpa. You could have been a little bit more specific here for your grandson. Walking into this, this, this family, this old like patriarchy, surprisingly open-minded and generous about letting Kuluo discover himself. Yeah, actually, that very same hero villain thing I was talking about. Maybe that's the wrong way to frame it because it also is something I touched on last episode between Gon and Kuluo and their dynamic. Kuluo has gifts that Gon doesn't have. Kuluo is much more adept at understanding the situation and its complexity, weighing things, sort of separating what's going on from his current emotional state, which is a great and beautiful thing, but also compromises him with Gon who does not have that as much or at all. So like despite having information and knowledge that Gon probably needs, he's dragged along and compromised in a sense by Gon's inflexibility. Another example of being compromised because you have to do more. Wow, really, uh, really a very clear case of going seeing what he wants to see. Uh, she's saving her, though. You're not understanding the situation. You're blinded by your emotions. What is this? Submission? 
bends to submission. Go might be further infuriated by this. He's just gonna he might just read things into the situation as he wants. This is such a deep unknown unknown. Like no one, no one could have seen this coming. All that frustration and training. Oh, he's 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 lost it. Making him more enraged. There's an unexpected casualty. And unexpected emotions, unexpected human development and humanity. Which itself is a revelation that anyone can be special to the king. Self-imposed weakness. Yeah, something like that. Or more like, nothing will really have an effect on Gon. Gon has already made up his mind. And like, if someone has made up their mind about something, anything you say will be filtered deliberately to arrive at the point you already want to reach. It's one of the difficulties and sometimes futilities of any kind of conversation. The other party has to be willing. If someone is really dedicated to a particular outcome, not to the truth or to deeper understanding, even counter evidence against what they say, will be filtered towards evidence of what they say. I don't know what you do here, but we did have success that one time with knocking Gon out. Though even then, it's not clear what the right thing to do in this situation is because easy to forget the stakes and the fact that they're royal guards and this is an ant colony intent on world subjugation and selection and all this stuff. Peter's not great. Kamugi is just an innocent victim in all this. She would even take her own life after this was complete. If there's ever any doubt about her loyalty to the king. Oh. No, no, no. No, no, no. That's not it. I'm sort of with Kalua. I mean, I don't want this to be true. Even as a viewer, I'm kind of attached to their friendship. It's been so great and beautiful in so many ways. That being said, there's growing evidence that Gon, perhaps while being a great friend in some ways, has sort of a hard cap on how far that goes, and that cap is where it suits him personally, which is not at all the level of depth of friendship that Kalua has obtained. Also, like in the back of my mind, the hypocrisy moment from the Phantom Troop arc is coming up, where Gon became enraged at the, the concept that the fact that someone who does terrible things could also have positive values like caring about comrades or valuing life of friends, etc. If he can't understand that, then he also can't understand or wouldn't accept that someone like Pito would be willing to sacrifice herself or do good things for a life. Even though there is something kind of right about that because it's not Pito necessarily who's there, it's the king that's there and Pito is his vessel. Though I guess you could say for Pito, that person is the king. <laughs> The king's soul. The girl is stressed. Please include, include the word Nyao. Right. Uh, stop where you're ahead. Quit, quit while you're ahead. The king being who he is is nothing, nothing to us. And if the past of the Royal Guards is any indication, she really does mean anything. Hypocrite. Well, I just feel like he's breaking. Very important fork in the road. You need to say what you need to say. I mean, look. I don't want to go Don't turn on Kalua, man. It's an act of good faith. 
It's awful. I'm watching Gon turn into this demon. I also feel really bad for him. Like, he's just not able to process it. And he's a little kid who experienced his mentor figure getting torn to shreds and then being revived as a corpse puppet. Destroying that sense that Gon so heavily covets of being able to do what he wants and protect people he cares about and not being vulnerable. Life being this big adventure. It's a really hard situation to come into if you care about the person. One of the hardest obstacles to deal with sometimes with people is when you have what you think is an insight that you feel convicted in. To the best of your ability and estimation, you've tried really hard to weigh things in a nuanced fashion and isolate separate issues, look at them one at a time if possible, genuinely desire a productive outcome. But someone is really wrapped up in like the, the emotion of a thing. One counter against you that's really difficult to deal with is you don't know what I've been through. You don't understand my pain. It has a way of washing out any sort of logical argument or reasonable argument. And there's really no coming back from that. Like partly because you can entertain that simultaneously. Like you un understand how that feels. You definitely don't want to dismiss someone's experience and pain and personal difficulty in life. You don't want to invalidate their feelings. You also wonder if maybe you don't understand, right? Like if you're trying to be a reasonable person and, and weigh things, like I said, it might be possible that you have missed something critical that they know from experience. That also is a real thing. It is true that experiencing something often gives you a deeper understanding of the thing. It also doesn't make someone right in their argument or proposed solution or identification of the real problem just for having experienced something terrible in that category or in their lives. It's very difficult to get that right. Gon is just completely overpowering everyone here. Gon's pain, which is translated into rage, is so solid and robust. It's a crazy mix of sympathy, sadness, wanting to comfort and nurture and side with him and also wanting to stop him and maybe having a responsibility as painful as it is to push through it. <laughs> There's no limit to what she'll do here. As long as it ensures she can keep up the healing. I'll just maim myself in advance. It's so dangerous. Any slip up, any excuse that gives good justification. Total loss of world. That's okay. That's fine. Someone once said Gwen is a beast. He's... Oh wow, he's... I don't know. A hypocrite! Big hypocrite. You can't be good and bad. Yeah, take it out of the building. Although that might accidentally kill them too. The shogi board. And now you made me cry. Which makes me angry! Oh no! I thought, I thought this was... First comes Rock. Oh god. I thought we were... I thought this was a positive. I thought it was positive. He rejected it. He rejected it. Lua. And you'll kill the girl who's totally innocent in all of this. I'm oh, half afraid he's gonna punch Kilua. What? Wrong! It is the opposite. Whoa, that is the wrong reading. And it's sort of a selfish one. I don't care. What the hell are you talking about? Are you out of your mind? You don't understand anything. Who just ate that? This is... Strategic in a, like, a sad way. Like, it, it's the right thing to say to Gon, because Gon cares so much about Kite. Or that's sort of his, like, stated mission and purpose here. He's speaking Gon's language. It's not really what needs to be said. It almost feels like giving up on Gon a bit. Continuing this general feeling I have of, like, a loss of faith. It's like when you have a stubborn child, and they really just need to behave. It's just causing problems for everyone, and it's not good for them, it's not good for you. They're not getting what they want anyway. But kids are hard to reason with, and you're exhausted, so what you say is, if you stop crying, I'll get you ice cream, <laughs> you know? It's so, like, low level. Kite is just Gon's ice cream. Does Gon really think Kilo doesn't care, or is that just an attack? That is actually a really perfect follow-up to what I was just saying. That is often what people resort to, this appeal to emotion. You couldn't possibly understand. You are callous, you're uncaring. You see this in all sorts of sinister ways, you know, like if you have any sort of thought that differs from the norm, you just don't care about people. You're selfish. So easy for you to say having this advantage of not having this problem that I have because you don't have this problem personally, you couldn't possibly have an opinion about it. You couldn't possibly have any insight on it or have thought about it or care about it or have it mean anything to you or want to fix it. Only the people who have pain understand. Only me, from my perspective, from where I'm standing, due to the extremity of my emotion, could have any kind of clarity on this situation. So if you're not on my side, you're my enemy. This sort of reductionist thinking is, is scary to me. And it's also painful and lonely because maybe you, you do really care. Maybe you have arrived where you have arrived with honest to God, good faith. Maybe you two are so overwhelmed by the concept and thought of other people suffering that you can't 
possibly express it. And instead of trying to focus on detaching yourself from the emotion a little bit so that you can operate with any degree of helpfulness at all, maybe you're operating on a hierarchy of fear so that your fear of the injustice is lesser than the fear of what might happen in blind reaction to that injustice. Speaking of Attack on Titan, I do sort of understand it on some point because just the way things go, the farther into nuance and complexity you reach, the fewer people there are just because of difficulty. So we deal with very basic modes of operating most of the time, but there's a real danger of then eliminating the possibility that anybody actually could have a different point of view, but also be reasonable and want the same things that you want. I think it's important to keep that in mind and push for the ideal that you want to try taking the highest form of the argument at all times, rather than reducing people into like, you're evil, you don't care, you don't understand. You can give people the benefit of the doubt because maybe they have something to offer. They got a little bit off topic. Bottom line, poor Kalua. And he handled it really well. He just saw it for what it is, I think, but it's still gotta hurt. And now with that out of the way, we can freely enjoy Pito's murder. Oh. He looks plastic. Oh, oh, in that case, that's that's good. Very reassuring. Unimpressed. This is weird though because the promise to the king or loyalty to the king supersedes anything she promises Gon. There is a little bit of correctness to Gon not trusting her. Like she would also say anything. She'd be willing to do anything but she also would be willing to say anything to Gon. This music. <laughs> Did Clue leave? Who just leave? He just bounced? Wait, what? I don't know if leaving is the right answer. I don't blame him. I mean, it could also be a fake out. It could be like going to get Gatorade or something. You know, they got an hour to kill. I understand being disappointed, being hurt, and even the loss of faith. Going is not what I hoped, but I think maybe you stick it out to the end. You don't want to totally give up yet. I think you leave at the point where, with full honesty, self-honesty, you determine that you have done everything that you can do for your friend or for someone without crossing that line into like unhealthy compromise. It is really tough to know where that line is, but there is a line. Like I was saying previously, if your goal is really to help people, you want to be in the best position to help them. Once it starts creeping into your power, your ability, your self-confidence, your self-worth, your finances, whatever it maybe. For someone who has shown incapability of something and has a weakness in a certain area that you're trying to help them with, you're now net weaker between the two of you. So in your help, you may have been making the situation worse. You're also creating an incentive for that person to start like taking more. People and their problems tend to be something like black holes. There's no limit to how much they can take without anything really changing. This is a totally made up example, but let's say there's somebody who has just demonstrated time and time again, they cannot manage money and it's not through a series of bad luck. It's like directly through their actions time and time again. They have gone from a comfortable situation to a terrible situation all of their own doing and they then ask you for money. The heartstring pull is like, take whatever I have. And I'm not willing to write that off completely as bad. Maybe there's something more valuable that you're attaining that compensates for the loss of money. But if you're purely looking at the financial aspect of it, unless they've demonstrated some sort of change, very likely, almost certainly, they will end up right in the same situation again. All that money you gave them is just gone. It's drained into the black hole. And now they are in the same situation you're trying to help them with. But now you also have no way to help anyone. And you are now in a bad situation. It's a massive net loss. And very likely, you end up feeling bitter. And astonishingly, the other person ends up feeling bitter. The person that you gave everything to because either now they have some sort of expectation of your providing or they have a tremendous amount of guilt about what they've done that then is projected onto you. The relationship becomes uncomfortable. I mean, I actually do have experience here in a very small way. I've experienced lending people money, trying to do it in a conscientious way where I'm like, well, I'll probably never get this money back. This is the amount I can comfortably give where I won't really feel any bitterness for having lost it. What ends up happening sometimes is that the strain in the friendship comes from the other direction because now the person has a debt sort of and debt is sort of emotionally taxing. And so subconsciously or not, there's an incentive to like distance themselves from me, which is sad because my initial intention was to help. And even if I said like, don't pay me back, you know, it's still, it doesn't feel great to be that kind of person to not repay your debts. So you still associate the person who helped you with that. It's unpleasant. Anyway, for Kalua in this situation, I feel like it's a little bit premature because right now we're just sitting here. I think Kalua could stick out the situation to the end, maybe then make a decision. Gon is not hopeless, you know? Gon is not only a beast and a demon. Gon is a, a kid who is capable at times of, of great warmth. It's just like his, his internal struggles, his weaknesses have a way of overlapping or eating into his positive qualities. The way he's composed, he's compromised in a way that the positive elements of his friendship will be overshadowed. I think this is one of the episodes of Hunter x Hunter so far that's filled me with the, the deepest sense of profound sadness. You know, this loss of faith in a friend. And also sadness for Gon. I don't like it. I don't like his behavior. But, you know, like I've said, different things can be true at once. This is terrible behavior. He is a kid who, you know, didn't really have much upbringing or, or any fatherly attention at all. Like, his father designed his parenting style around absenteeism, making the absenteeism the strategy as opposed to just being absent. His sense of independence and stubbornness, I think, largely a result of that. I can take care of myself. I can do everything I want. Nothing can stand in my 
my way. I need to be as great as Jing, this mythological figure that I've never met, that I need to believe in because I have nothing else. He hasn't had a lot of guiding hands and counterbalances and other lessons about restraint, give and take, compromising, and also the very real pain that came from the demise of Kite and seeing Pito as the aggressor that took that from him against his will. As has come up in a lot of shows, I really do believe in people's potential. I think time is a powerful thing. We tend to think of people in a snapshot of their, their worst moments or how we encounter them, which is not what people are at all. And so some benefit of the doubt and some compassion is due there, even to your your so-called enemies. But there's also a little bit of unfairness in that. You know, like you're left with the pain of what happened that you didn't choose. Someone else came into your life and did something terrible. You harbored this all your life and then you meet them and they're fine. You know, they're okay. Or they're, they're supposed to be sympathetic. They're supposed to be able to live their lives and say sorry. Well, what about all of this pain I've been carrying all my life? Where are the amends for that? Peter could just come into my life when I'm having fun killing tiny little ants with my surrogate father, the only one I've ever had, and destroy him. And now I'm supposed to just sit here and like wait for you to do what you want to do because you love someone. I understand it on that level. But that sort of crumbles under, I think, a, a more in-depth level of scrutiny. It also speaks to the importance of responsibility for your own thoughts and emotions. At a certain point, even if the perpetration was real, even if you were a victim, the continuing to be dominated by that mentally and emotionally is something that you are doing. That's probably extremely controversial. It will be confused with victim blaming. But if you're still dwelling on things and can't let go and want to seek vengeance, despite a lot of counter evidence that the situation has changed, that's now maybe something that's in you, as deeply unsatisfying as that is. Everything inside of you screaming for revenge and writing the, the world order that you rely on for peace of mind and have any sense of justice that gives you context into the world and how to operate and lets you live without just total fear of catastrophe at all times against another person's humanity. You know, you're supposed to just think calmly and rationally in those situations. But like many things, I think it becomes clear in media, though I know not everyone agrees. It reminds me of Avatar with Katara. I think for a lot of people instinctively, the way that kind of mercy hits is uh, that's a win for the character in question. It's not important what the fate is of the perpetrator. And like worst case scenario, you end up becoming the, the perpetrator. You end up becoming the one who is inflicting trauma or pain or death, which is probably what Gon would have done to Kamugi if he had just annihilated a prostrate Pidu. It's also odd because like I said, it's not really her. It's like not her sympathy. It's not her character growth. It's the king's and her beauty in this is sort of her love for the king, which is kind of less clear. It may or may not be just, you know, base wiring. Not that that would necessarily take away from the love. Grown definitely at a crossroads and breaking. I think the one silver lining or benefit is that a breaking point can go one of two ways. You can settle into it and become terrible, the worst. Like I was saying about uh, poof and romantic relationships in general, like you might just accept that, oh, I'm, a, I'm at the whim and mercy of this person. I will do anything. I will sacrifice my entire self and everything I think is right for this person's favor. Or it goes the other way where you're like, oh man, like I was not really conceptualizing this correctly. I've been operating from a place of a lot of pain and suffering and I need to work that out. I can't have this dominate my life anymore. To which, of course, revenge is probably not the answer. I mean, you can carry out a successful revenge and still be every bit as in pain as before because of whatever that element of it is that's that's in you, that's your choice, that's you running the same pattern on loop, the thought habits you've developed and deepened over time that make any sort of growth difficult. I would say it's 50-50 for Gon, but if Kalu is not there, I feel like that pushes it way over the other extreme of he'll reject this, this new consideration because it's too difficult and too painful. It's much easier to just revert to the the base traits because unlike what he accused Kalu of, Gon has it easy. It's easier to have this one track mind. There are good guys, there are bad guys. My enemies must be destroyed. Everything I do, everything I say, everything I think is justified because of this emotion, this intensity of emotion that is known to me, that is my experience. And I think it's even worse because the fact of being challenged at all, the rawness of these wounds will only intensify the anger.